Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie and this is my channel where I share with you works in progress, finished projects, um, books I'm reading, things I'm cooking up, funny things my kids say, and I hope that as you watch previous episodes and this episode that you will find some inspiration along the way. Today I would like to share with you my first finished project of 2020. Um, this was a really quick knit and you could probably do it in a week or so. It really depends on how much time you end up spending on it. Um, so that's not really the best way to gauge, but I think if you wanted to knit one shawl in a week or two, this one would be the one to do it. Um, it is the Alejandra Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. It is um, knit and DK weight yarn. So I'll tell you the pattern specifications first. Um, and then I'll tell you what I did and I'll share with you photos of the progress um, and the finished product product, and um, a little bit about the yarns I used and how I chose my colors. So it is a DK weight yarn. It approximates um, 750 yards or 684 meters of DK weight yarn in three different colors. Um, you use US 8 or 5 millimeter needles. The gauge is 14 stitches and 30 rows to 4 inches or 10 centimeters in garter stitch on US 8 5 millimeter needles after blocking. I did not swatch because it is a shawl, so if it was a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, it wouldn't really matter to me. Um, so I did not do any gauge swatching. The pattern is one size, it is written in English and Spanish and um, it is a crescent shape. Um, there is mosaic knitting and there are stripes. It is provided, the mosaic section is provided written out and charted. It is worked flat, there's a garter tab, and the bind off is an elastic bind off. So, um, let me take this off so I can show it to you. And it is worked flat in the mosaic section makes it not as reversible. So if you have a shawl that's all garter, then I feel like it's pretty reversible because there's really no front or back. Um, so if you see this garter section, it's the same on the front or the back. But as you get to the bottom, the edging, that beautiful mosaic edging, this is the front. And if you turn around, that's the back. So before you get to that section though, you may get confused on which side is your right side and your wrong side. So definitely place a marker on your right side just to kind of keep track if you're gonna be putting it down um, to remember where you are at. So you might be able to tell that I used four colors in mine, not three. So my first color here is this Fuchsia by the Yarn Collective Bloomsbury DK in Fuchsia. My second color here is this lavender with speckles, and that is by um, Shobha at Serendipitous Wool. It is the Mata or Worsted weight yarn, and it is called Pin Cushion Urchin. And then um, I was worried about running out of that one since it is worsted, so there's less yardage. So um, I initially had a tonal gray picked out as my second, second color, but, um, the contrast wasn't high enough for when I would get to this bottom section. So then actually by the time I got to this bottom section, I thought, oh, I have plenty of my initial color two left. So then I started the mosaic section with my color C and my initial color B, but the contrast wasn't high enough. So between the two colors, it looked high enough, but because they both have speckling in them, just the way the slip stitches work in mosaic knitting, they're was too much texture and it was too busy and it was really hard to actually read my stitches because the lavender color is also in the color C. So I couldn't tell as easily where I was in the pattern. So um, my color C is um, by Serendipitous Wool. It's the Agni DK weight in Stardust. And then my second color B that I used only for the mosaic section is Malabrigo Rios in Frank Ochre, and that is worsted weight. I really love how this gold turned out here. I needed to pick something that was more solid. Um, the 
gold is a little bit tonal but pretty solid so that worked out really well as a contrast. Um, the difference between mosaic knitting with the slip stitches as opposed to color work with um, like Fair Isle stranded knitting is there's a little bit more texture so it's not as flat. So then the yarns itself that themselves lend the yarn and the pattern lends itself to some shadows from each stitch and I feel like because it isn't as smooth then you need to have even higher contrast than you would in Fair Isle knitting. Because each stitch isn't just on one row. Because of you slipping stitches, you'll have stitches that cross two rows, so the definition is a little bit different. So when you're picking your colors, pick a very high contrast, and not just in color or tone, but you have to think about if you're doing tonal or speckled or variegated, um, solids would show up the best in this mosaic knitting section. So yeah, so those are the four colors that I used. Um, I will show you how much I ended up having left. So my first color, I think I had like, started with 100 grams and I had about 20 left. So I love this fuchsia. It has so many of my favorite colors in it. And then my second color, I ended up having quite a bit left because I couldn't use it for the mosaic section because even though, look at this, they look very con high contrast between light and dark. However, when I got to the mosaic section, I will insert a photo here. Um, it just wasn't high contrast enough. And because there's a little bit of lavender in this, it was really hard to see my stitches, surprisingly. It didn't seem like it was going to be that difficult, but it ended up being hard. You can see some uh, speckling in there. Oh, I love it so much. I don't know if it's focusing, there we go. And then my um, contrast color for the mosaic, I did not start with a full skein. I think I started with 62, and this is how much I had left. I was totally playing yarn chicken at the end um, with the bind off. Um, and so what I did was I would weigh how much yarn I had after each row. And so I had an idea of how much I had left to go and any modifications I might have to make. So I think by then it would either take like four, five, or six grams of yarn per row, just depending on how far along I was, because you're still increasing. So you're going to use up more as you go. And so when I got there, I did per pattern here, except I used color C instead of color B because I wanted it to match up here. And then for the gold, I added back in, I added an extra row, and then I couldn't do two rows before the bind off because I would have run out of yarn for sure. So I did one, and then I did the elastic bind off on the way back. Um, and I could have, I guess, done a purling wise elastic bind off, but I did knitting wise, so then it's kind of um, backwards, I guess. So then like your bind off normally would look like this with these stitches, but on the other side. It doesn't bother me, I think it looks nice. I like it like that. Um, another thing I changed is for the mosaic section, I upped one needle size to size nine or five and a half millimeter. Um, when doing color work, oftentimes your stitches can be a little tighter and I found with Stranded knitting, I'm not, I don't get too tight, but with um, slip stitches, I do. And so I definitely need to increase one size to give it a little more wiggle room. So once I got to the mosaic knitting section, I switched to US 9s. And then once I got back to the garter edging, then I switched back to the smaller size needles. If you do the um, tassels or the fringe, like the pattern, has. I don't think I have the photo of the pattern printed out here or maybe it's kind of hard to see if you do those it'll actually hold your mosaic section down like if you have any flipping up of it I decided not to do the fringe because between wearing winter coats and zippers fringe gets stuck and then you just have a lot of problems so I would just rather not deal with the fringe. I do have yarn like these two colors remaining if I decide fringe is something I want to do but for now I think I'm going to leave that section off. 
Um, another thing I changed was when I was worried about yardage, I changed up the striping section a little bit. So in the pattern, there aren't as many stripes here. There's a little more solid of this color and a little more solid, I think, of this color. But um, I was kind of on a roll and I just kept striping. So maybe subconsciously, I was trying to save myself yardage for this color, which actually worked out well, considering I only have five grams remaining of that color and I wouldn't have had enough to finish that mosaic section if I didn't do that and I really wanted to make sure the mosaic section had the right colors because I can't really substitute in a separate color in the pattern halfway through so I'm really excited that that worked out for me um, another thing that I would recommend in addition to having that progress keeper on your right side to keep track um, I didn't do this but maybe from the beginning mark where the middle is because if you get off on your increases let's say you realize you're counting and you're like short one um, you don't know if it's on the right side or the left side that you missed an increase and it might not seem obvious at the time but as you keep going it ends up being more obvious so I noticed I had I think short one here or there and then so I just added another one in um, but my right and left sides I think are not quite the same length so let's see if I can get it to right about the middle there and you'll see on the bottom they are off by like maybe six inches again it doesn't matter because it's wrapped around my neck anyway or over my shoulders so it doesn't really matter but if you wanted it to be more symmetrical then put a note where the middle is put a marker where the middle is and then if you get off in your counting um, you can more easily tell which side you missed an increase so that's my tip for that um, and let me see was there anything else There are some stitch counts throughout um, the pattern to help you keep track. Um, they aren't noted for every single row, so if that's something that you are concerned about, um, with the increases, it's the same number every other row for how many you increase by, so you can always jot down on the side of that row how many stitches you're supposed to be at. I do that a lot of times for sweaters where it matters a lot more with fit that way I just make sure I am on track because I do not enjoy ripping back I will if I absolutely have to but if I can do little things ahead of time to prevent ripping back then I will do that um, on this one I did rip back once for the mosaic section when I was using that pink cushion urchin color with stardust and the contrast wasn't high enough I did rip back the mosaic section and picked back um, hundreds of those <laughs> stitches but it really wasn't too bad and then I just re-knit that. Um, I found this a quick knit. Um, I highly recommend it. It was really fun and you can do so many different color combinations. The one thing is just to make sure they're high contrast um, or at least when you get to the mosaic section make sure that is high contrast. In my Ravelry notes for this project I did include my grams and yardage for I think this top section and then the mosaic section because I find that really helpful. Um, I didn't see many notes on that for the previous projects which made it hard to gauge how much yarn people used for the fringe versus the main shawl part because if I ran out before the fringe I can still figure out something for the fringe but I wouldn't want to run out of yardage while I'm knitting the main shawl part. So hopefully my notes help others and I hope that if you do try out this project that you have a lot of fun with it. Um, it is great for those that enjoy knitting um, the knit stitch and then having um, a part of a part that is more maybe a little more challenging. I wouldn't say it's challenging but something that piques your interest more than just garter along the way. So cheers to being creative. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy making!
if you will, in my um, on my Instagram stories a little while back but I wanted to have it in here too. Um, you may remember snap bracelets from, I suppose now it's decades ago, but if your shawl won't stay in place and you need something to hold it together, use a snap bracelet. The open ends can be tucked underneath and there you go. Easy peasy, right? There's my hack for the day, enjoy.